In this video, we're going to learn how to build an image search engine using Streamlit and the Clip Embedding Library. So we've got the idea for this from Simon Willison's blog where he explains how to do this and using a couple of libraries that he's created, one called LLM and then one another one called LLM Clip. And so we're going to go over to our terminal and we're going to launch the IPython REPL and we're going to import the LLM library and then we're going to get an embedding model for that clip library. And then we're going to also cr create a console from, for the rich, from the rich library, which makes it easier to, to view stuff on the terminal. Now we're going to use clip. Now clip generates embeddings in the same space for images or words that represent those images. So it means that in theory, if we embed a picture of a cute dog and then the phrase cute dog, those embeddings should be very similar to each other. So let's give it a try. So we're going to create a um, just a little pager context and then we're going to output the embedding of the text phrase cute dog. And you can see it comes back with a bunch of uh, an array with a bunch of numbers. Let's now do the same thing for an image. I've got an image in an images folder and we're going to also import a, a little function for displaying this image. We'll just display that so you can see it is a <laughs> it is a dog dressed as Santa. And now let's do the same thing. So we'll create our pager, open the image, and then again we're going to embed that image. And you can see it comes back with a bunch of numbers as well. Now let's have a look if we do this for some more images. So I'm going to just load all the images in my images folder that have the PNG extension into an images file. And if you have a look, you can see I've got a lot. Uh, I've been using Dali a lot. I've got a lot of images uh, coming from there. And what we're going to do now is embed all of those. So we're going to just import the base64 and hashlib functions. We'll create an embeddings array and then we're going to iterate over our images, open each one, create an embedding, and then we're going to put it into the embeddings array. And we're going to have a dictionary. So we'll have an embedding, we'll put a path, and then we're just going to generate an idea like a same size ID based on the image path. Now we're going to put these images into Chroma DB. So we're going to import Chroma, we'll create a client, and then we're going to create a collection called images and then we're going to add the images to the collections. We'll start with the embeddings then we're going to create the metadata which in this case is going to be the file path and then we'll give them the IDs as well. Now let's do a query. So we're going to again we're going to create a, an embedding for the cute dog and then we're going to query the collection and get three results and you can see it comes back with the results. We've got the distances and then underneath we've got the, the metadata and if we copy the file path for the first results say and then use our display image function you can see that it comes back with with the dog. How about if we do it for the second one as well? So this time it comes back it's probably quite cute uh, but it's not a dog right it's an owl uh, and a walrus. Let's now have a look at how we would put this into an app. So we're going to open a an app the app.py file where we've got a streamlit app and I'm not going to code this from scratch but I'll just show you um, something that we built earlier. So at the top we've got some imports we've then got our streamlit config. If we come down a little bit we can see we've got an ability to choose a search term or upload an image and then we've got just a little divider and then we load in our embedding model the clip embedding model and the chroma client and then the collection as well and then what we're going to do next is if they've if they've provided uh, as long as they've provided a file or a search term we're then going to embed it and then search chroma for the results and captain time how long it took and then finally render the results on the page and if we now come over to the browser Let's have a look at how to, to do some searches. So we're going to start with the cute dog one. So we'll do that. And you remember the first two results, we knew what they were. The third one, it's also it's also a dog. So that's worked pretty well. Let's try something else. You can see I'm wearing a green jumper and I've put in a picture of me in that green jumper. So let's search for green jumper. Uh, so this one is a complete failure, right? So it comes up with streamlit uh, and a chipmunk. So none of those are like a, a jumper. But my, my friend said, okay, well, it's probably trained on American terminology. So try to change it to, to sweatshirt. So let, let's try that. Uh, and so you can see here, still Streamlit, some reason is coming in first, but the, the green jumper is now in second place. Let's have a look at the image search. So what happens here is we're effectively finding similar images to the one that we upload. So I'm going to go over to my to my finder, and I've got some images in a folder. So I've got this a very very colourful parrot, or, su or supposed to be a parrot at least. Let's uh, let's upload that and see what it comes back with. So you can see it comes back with a whole load of very very colourful uh, parrots as well. And then what about another one? So I've got a picture. I've got, I've got Dali to generate me a picture of a network. So let's uh, upload that one. And then you can see it comes back with a bunch of other uh, things that, that, that look like networks. So this is clearly not perfect, especially based on the green jumper uh, as a search engine, but it's not terrible. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if we can do better as new embedding uh, algorithms are created. Uh, and if you're interested in embedding algorithms, you might also like this video up here about the fast embed 
text embeddings library which runs on your CPU.